Right, you lot, how's it going? So, you're probably thinking to yourselves, hang on a minute, I don't remember all of this happening, all of this falling apart. So, I started doing this, started filming it, but then due to uh, some of the problems with the cameras I've got, I lost all the footage of me taking this apart and diagnosing the problem with the diff and sorting it all out. So, um, this is where we are so far. So the diff, the front diff um, was completely, well not completely because it did kind of work, but it stripped out, it stripped some of itself, uh, a few of the teeth on, a few of the gears there were stripped. So I decided, right, let's just get a new one, managed to get it all out in quite an easy time. And I ended up getting, if I can get a focus on it, I ended up getting the four bevel gears, um, the conversion set. Obviously, HPR racing, genuine, China made. Uh, had a look around, ended up getting it from Luke's RC shop in the end because, well, it was the only place that had them in stock and uh, it was the best price. So, definitely go to Luke's RC shop if you want the uh, the four bevels. Um, but I only got one, and this is as far as I've got so far. Um, very out of focus, my apologies for that. I put it in. Um, I'm going to put some oil in there. A lot of people put grease in. I'm not putting grease in there. I'm putting oil in there. So that's what I'm doing. You can like it or not like it. That's uh, up to you. But um, I'm putting oil in there. Uh, and that's that. So I'm not going to do the back one because the back one's fine. When the back one dies, I'll get a back diff and we'll do the same conversion. Um, but I could only afford the front one for now. So the front one's going to go in and we'll get that. Get that going again. Um, sweet, but yeah, bit of a bit of a, a late sort of update sort of thing really. But oh well, let's get this diff back together and put it back in there. I had to pry it apart because a lot of the the person who put all this together many many years ago, because as you know, I bought this truck off somebody and he already did the upgrades or the upgrades. Well, he used Threadlock. Um, <laughs> you know, the, probably the. Uh, Higher grade thread lock, non-removable by the looks of things. I don't know, nah. And then a lot of the screws are stripped. Um, the heads, they're going to round off. And I'm not not in the mood for drilling them out and doing all that. So I simply just left them in, pried it apart, bent the plastic slightly, but I don't care about that. That'll be fine. And um, got it out that way. So time to put it back together. Well, she's pretty much back together. I've just got to put a few more screws in the bottom there. Got a little bit of an issue there with that pin. Um, I must have bent that a little bit there, so I can't get that all the way in, but um, oh, I'll do that now. I'm gonna get a big pair of pliers and squeeze it together so I can get that to go in there. But then that's pretty much done. We've got Then we've got a four bevel front diff. We'll just have to wait for the center one or the back one to break. And then when that breaks, I'll upgrade that as well. But for the time being, I'm not grading nothing else. And we'll leave it as is. Um, yeah. Still haven't had then any of this half tank lean rubbish that a lot of you keep going on about, but there we'll work that out. Um, well, well, I'll work it out. I mean, I'm just going to leave it as is. I mean, there's a reason why um, HPI never changed the tank because there's nothing actually wrong with it. I mean, it, it, it works perfectly fine. Um, you could. I mean, there is a theory, and I understand the theory that some of you say. I mean, I, I respect a lot of you. You put it in the comments, and I respect what you say. You know, as the as the fluid goes down the pressure, the air pressure, may become less because, you know, the, the engine or the exhaust pressure through here has got to fill up more of a void in the tank and maybe less pressure. And when it's higher up, there'll be more pressure. I understand the theory in that, but it's, it's just not how it is. Um, unless I can find some sort of pressure gauge which will measure low enough and I can rig it up Perhaps I can rig it up in this line to be able to measure the pressure. And then we will actually see if the pressure does go down as the liquid goes down. Um, but other than that, it, I don't, it's just no good. Um, apparently some on-road on people run longer pr um, exhaust lines like this one, pressure lines, whatever you want to call it, um, to, to get more pressure or some rubbish like that. But to me, honestly, I've never, never noticed a difference. I mean... The further that goes down, there's always there's always pressure in here anyway while the engine's running. Always pressure. So 
the pressure's never going to go. It's not as if it's not as if the as if as the liquid goes down, there's no pressure, and then it has to build it up again, like a like an air compressor that's run out of air, and then it has to build up again. It's it's not like that at all. So there's always pressure in here, and the fuel goes down at sl such a slow rate that you know it. I can't see how the pressure can really sort of go down uh, anyway where it would cause not enough pressure to feed the carburetor. The only way to sort of work it out is through science and actual testing with a pressure gauge and if I can find any pressure gauge that will actually work with low enough readings, you know, read low enough, because there's not a lot of pressure in here whatsoever. I'll get one and then we'll do an experiment and we'll actually see if the half tank lean thing is a real thing. But um, yeah, so I'm going to put the rest of this together now and then we'll, that'll be the end of that. So that uh, that last little pin there, that one there, it wouldn't um, it wouldn't go in there, it wouldn't line up or nothing like that for some reason. Obviously that's not quite right. So I have to resort, resort to brute force and drilling the hole out a bit bigger. But um, we got there, that's now in. We're rocking and rolling, so I've just got to put a few more screws in, put the rest of the screws in for the bumper, like that. We're happy, man. Cool. I can't believe it. Oh, I'm so happy with it. And then, we ain't got anything else left to do. It's time to run it again and see what other thing. Oh, I've still got to do the slipper clutch, right? We'll, we'll put that together, and then we'll have a look at that slipper clutch and see what the trouble is with that. Right, let's have a look at this. I've got this little pair of mole grips. So let's put that on there. Oh, I have to make them a bit bigger. We we'll put these little pair of mole grips on there, and I should better hold on to it. Um, we might, well, I might have um, what they call glazed the glazed the pad. And it happens to clutches on full size cars and motorbikes and stuff. Um, if you if you slip them too much, they get a bit of a glaze on them. Oh, that's not going to work with one hand, I need two hands. Um, they get a bit of a glaze on them, and then they just will never, ever grip properly again. So that might have happened, in which case we'll just put a new pad. I've got the one in the box, the brake pad. Remember the brake pad that I called a brake pad, but it's actually a clutch pad? I've got a new one. If not, I'll just buy a new one. But let's get the spanner. I might need to get... Um, I need to set it up with two hands, but I'll just see if I can get any more turns on it, and then we'll know then what I need to do. Well, I got loads on there. Look at that. Hopefully, let's have a look. Let's get the hand away. You can see the see the clean bit of thread with the dirt on the end of it. That's how much I managed to do it up. That little spring's really compressed now. So, well, there's going to be a few things that could possibly and probably will happen now that I've done that up. Because the idea of a slipper clutch... <laughs> It's to have a bit more control over your acceleration, you know, it's supposed to work like a real clutch, you know, you accelerate, it slips, and as the as the truck starts to move forward, the clutch then grips, and then you get your full torque and power, you know, it's supposed to do that, it's, it's supposed to prevent damage to your transmissions and your diffs and wheel spin, it's supposed to just keep better control, really, a bit like a traction control sort of device is what it's supposed to do. But obviously you can adjust them. So if you want them to slip a lot, if you want them to slip a lot, you loosen the nut and then you get loads of slippage or you do it up and you get less slippage. Always, I always, always, always on the rush, these rushes, they've got slipper clutches. On the other Savage, I always do them up as tight as I can get them. So that way you get full power straight away. Now with this engine, um, it killed the front diff with the clutch slipping. So I reckon now we're going to have some, we're going to have some uh, centre diff issues and some rear diff issues, and that met that plastic spur is probably going to be the first thing to strip. But we will see, won't we? The whole point is to find the weak spots. Once you've found the weak spots, you repair the weak spots with stronger bits, and you end up with one solid strong truck. There's loads of upgrades for the centre diff. I had loads of upgrades for the rear diff. The front diff has now got the four bevel upgrade. There is even a better upgrade for that, which is bulletproof upgrade. But we'll see. As and when things break, I'll repair them. Some people like to do the repairing them 
before they break, but I'd rather get my money's worth out of stuff, have it break, and then repair it. It's just the way I like to do things, really. But there you go, everybody's different. Thanks for watching, you lot. Enjoy yourselves, all the best, and remember, everybody's the same, we're all equal. Treat everybody how you want to be treated. Don't let the past ruin your future. That is the most important key. Cheers, you lot. If you want stickers, they're for sale. Let me know. We've got those ones, the ones of the actual Savage, the actual Savage project. There's the stickers for that. And we've also got Haggard RC ones. If you want them, let me know. Find me on Instagram, send me a message, or you could just send me some money through the PayPal link. They're a pound each. Thanks, you lot.